Hello, this is Mike, and in this screencast I want to tell the story of how a little dog called Maxwell and an accident with a refrigerator created a social media crisis for a retail giant. The story concerns the Sears department store chain franchises uh, in the main, and the little dog in the left-hand corner of this picture is the unfortunate victim of a tragic accident that caused a number of problems for Sears. As background, uh, the incident took place in 2009, the Thanksgiving holiday, and in the delightfully named town of Dripping Springs, Texas, a middle-aged couple decided to purchase a new fridge from Sears hometown. The fridge was delivered uh, free of charge, all on schedule, but unfortunately, during the delivery, the Sears driver accidentally hit the couple's pet dog, Maxwell, and after very serious injuries, Maxwell tragically died. What happened next was the start of a saga that went on for a little while and shows up some of the real dangers of social media. Sears sometimes stores are franchises, as I've already said, and so Maxwell's owners often they went to visit the franchise holder. Initially, the guy in Sears was very apologetic, but unfortunately, he then started to dig a hole for himself by being overprotective in terms of the company brand and his store, and he started denying all responsibility and gradually um, he made matters worse and worse by suggesting that Maxwell had no right to be in his own backyard and the couple were irresponsible by letting the dog out when they knew a fridge was going to be delivered in a truck. Understandably Maxwell's owners were somewhat put out by that and they didn't really regard the apology as particularly sincere. Now, consumer revenge is, can take many different forms. Um, and what happened next was quite interesting because the couple decided that they were going to make everyone aware of what had happened to poor Maxwell. And so, with a very simple web page and some photographs of their pet dog, they created uh, cskilledmydog.com. Uh, then the site was launched on the 10th of December 2009. The link was initially just shared with friends and family via the normal channels, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Unfortunately, within 24 hours, the site had attracted thousands of hits and been picked up by the consumerist, a very widely read blog that champions consumer issues in the US. And so the whole site, cskilledmydog.com, went viral and spread across social media channels very rapidly. So it didn't look like it was going to be a particularly good Christmas for Sears department stores. The corporate response, however, does demonstrate how these situations can be recovered. And Sears have very clear policies in mind uh, for uh, service recovery incidents. And they're based around four good principles, which I think everyone should adhere to. Listen to the customer. When it's your fault, accept responsibility. Apologize appropriately. And then try to fix the problem in the best possible way with the customer. And, you know, seers are very, very aware of the effectiveness of this policy. And they're also very well aware that although four of us will say, hey, I had great service in Sears today, will tell 20 people if we had bad service. And so the negative side of social media is that it spreads bad news quicker than good news. So there was a clear policy in place, at least at the corporate level, even if the franchise holder hadn't followed it. And very quickly, we see a classic social media response. Social media is integral to what Sears do, and they have a strategist who's charged with monitoring intelligence gathered from all of the different channels. Direction was very quick. The divisional director, Sean Akday, who manages that the service recovery policy and the social media elements, quickly called a senior management meeting and alerted everyone within the organization to the problems that were being experienced, and in particular, 
it was decided quite quickly that um, to undo the harm the franchise holder had apparently done, they needed a very senior intervention. So a decision was taken to contact Maxwell's owners and connect them with Will Powell, the business unit president of Sears. Back in Dripping Strings, however, the couple who were Maxwell's owners were also discovering the dark side of social media. Initially, their story got a lot of sympathetic reaction, but quickly there were those who thought that perhaps they were overplaying it and messages of support were soon replaced by uh, quite abusive at times emails and phone calls criticizing the couple for exploiting Maxwell's death in order to attack Sears. A very unpleasant experience and a number of people have inadvertently found themselves on the receiving end of such attention when they've ventured into social media as a method of consumer revenge. So by the time the senior management team at Sears had tracked them down and contacted them, actually they were very happy to start talking to Will Powell. The recovery strategy was quite straightforward. Powers himself gave a very sincere apology to the owners. He did nothing at all to suggest he wanted to buy them off, but he did offer compensation for the dog and a full refund on the refrigerator. He, the couple offered to remove the website in return for these compensation packages, but Will Powers very said, firmly said no. I'm not asking you to do that, it happened, we're really sorry. The couple did anyway, uh, partly because they were happy with the response, partly to escape the bad publicity that they were now getting. So very quickly the site vanished and the couple pretty much went silent in terms of Maxwell's story. Sean Dave then uh, joined the, the consumerist blog discussions himself um, I won't read the whole statement out to you, but it's very widely available online. Essentially, he matter-of-factly just presented what the company had done about it, expressed deep regret, and said that they were on the path to reconciliation. Nothing more than that. The clever part about this, of course, was that what he also did was share the link with key third parties. People who, are, for example, columnists, commentators on Twitter in terms of consumer affairs, the type of people who, if they started retweeting it and saying that situation had been nicely resolved, other people would be influenced by that. So not just posting a response, but targeting the opinion leaders who, as independent third parties, could help subtly and gradually repair the damage done to the Sears brand. So it was very, very clever very, very effective, and soon things started to settle down again for the company as well as Maxwell's owners. So this is the key message here. The key influencers who initially spread the message, the third parties, are the ones you need to target and reach out to with a low-key and very subtly developed counter message. The third parties are crucial in the dissemination of information through social media channels. Don't just directly target the couple or the blog, target those who are spreading the message, people who are influenced too, but who influence others, because they're the ones who contributed to the whole thing going viral in the first place. And so closure was obtained. Sears brand didn't suffer any major long-term negative effects. The owners of Maxwell were left with kind of mixed feelings about everything. They were impressed by Sears at the corporate level's response, but there was a whole sour taste less in terms of their experience of social media. And I wonder whether they regret or not the decision to post that website, searskilledmydog.com. We'll perhaps never know. Um, but a negative service encounter here led to a social media crisis but it was quickly recovered using social media and the key influencers within it. Of course, there's no positive outcome to this because poor Maxwell is no longer with us. So what are the key takeaways from this screencast? Well, rapid escalation to senior management works really well and Sears did that within two hours. 
of becoming aware of the social media traffic around Maxwell's incident. I think Sears did lots of other things well. They used uh, search engines and filters to track activity so they could spread what they could measure not only the spread of messages but the sentiment within it. They made huge efforts as a company to understand the situation and not contain it and to reach out to the dog's owners and try to seek recompense. The other thing I think they did was they sensibly, and this is a great service recovery tip generally, they offered compensation but in a way that they didn't appear to be buy, trying to buy off Maxwell's owners. They didn't ask them to remove the site but when they did, when the couple did, they were obviously happy about that. So it was very, very measured response. And even their own press release, it was very neutral. We're really sorry this has happened. We've tried, we've put things right. We hope that Maxwell's owners uh, get over their loss. And that was kind of it. And the clever part about all of this in terms of the recovery strategy was the emphasis on targeting third party influencers and opinion leaders and allowing them to spread the message. And I think actually, social media or not, the personal approach, the intervention of will powers, very high level, was a massive uh, positive outcome here too, because that had huge impact and put things right very quickly for the company. So that's the story of Sears and Maxwell. And They've learned a lot as a company from this incident too. The Buy Sears community has lots of discussion boards and feedback channels, public and private, where dissatisfied or disgruntled customers can talk about their experiences and the company can intervene to fix them. As well as, of course, as we see in this screenshot, marketing products and services too. So, as I say, a tragic story involving the loss of a dog, but a, case, a good case study in terms of how to engage in effective service recovery through social media. Thank you.